Who the hell would predict their championship? Bloody hell. What was this game week? I'm happy you're all along here with us. We're going to predict game week nine of the championship. And with me tonight is my co-host and partner in crime. It's Mark Ryman. How are you getting on this evening, Mark? Yeah, I'm good. Thanks, Ollie. Boring this old championship, isn't it? Not many goals. <laughs> <laughs> absolutely bonkers bonkers and we're gonna have a whole segment just for apologies today <laughs> yeah so, yeah it's mental we love it <laughs> but let's let's kick this off with the game at the top of the game week this weekend it's it's a heavyweight one it's Sunderland versus Leeds yeah it's a heavyweight one um and I think uh, we might be going on two different directions here. Leeds drew uh, against Norwich. Uh, I think equalised Norwich were ahead in that game. Sunderland, uh, relatively straightforward win against Derby. I think Sunderland and at home, I've, I fancy them here. I fancied Norwich as well and got, got some pelters for saying it. But I think that Sunderland might edge this one purely based on being at home. Um, I'm still. I'm sorry, Leeds. I'm just. I'm not convinced. I'm still not convinced. It's ridiculous. You've got the best squad in the league, and you know you've got some great results. I just. It's past. It's the history of Leeds United in the Championship. I, I, I can't fully back you. I can't. I'm sorry. Sunderland two one. Yeah. So I feel this will be the first big test for Sunderland. Yes, they played Middlesbrough, and they did well there. Middlesbrough, they, very blunt in front of goal. Like, you know, they have that massive XG figure, but they just can't find the back of the net quite frequently. But they, they still look so dangerous. Uh, Sunderland, yes, they, they, they look great. You know, they're getting the results. They're playing some lovely football. But Leeds, I really can't look past Leeds here. So I've gone Sunderland 1, Leeds 3. And look, it, it doesn't make up a season like when you're up against these massive heavyweight teams and you can't get a win but you know the championship's bonkers and with like 40,000 fans at the stadium of light anything could happen and they're impressing me Sunderland I still don't think they'll be challenging for the top two I do think they will be in the playoffs but we'll see where they're at from this game that will show whether they are genuine contenders for promotion. Um, and on to the next one, we have Burnley versus Preston North End. Yeah, I've gone for a tight Burnley win. I think the goals have dried up a bit for Burnley um, and they're relying on, on the odd shot. They won 1-0, didn't they, against Plymouth um, <laughs> last game week. Preston, on the other hand, did a right job over Watford. Um so you'd think I'd go for a Preston win at least, or maybe a draw. No, Burnley 2-1. Um, I think at home Burnley are too strong for Preston. I know they got a good win in the last game, but for me, they haven't convinced me. Um, so, yes, they did very well in that last game. They're going to have to do a bit more before I, I consider them to, to be good enough to beat a side like Burnley. Burnley have had the goals drought, but at home they've been very strong. So Burnley 2-1 for me. Yeah, I said it last week. Uh, Turf Moor is a tough place to go. It really is. And you know what? Preston did have a great result against Watford, but by all accounts, Watford just weren't great in that game. I didn't watch it, but I've heard from Watford fans that, you know, they're very disappointed in, in, in the substitutes and the tactics. So uh, I will say that result, as good it, as it was, you know, what is the saying? One swallow, not a summer make or something like that. Correct. I don't think one result is indicative that Preston are, you know, turning a corner here. I just don't see it. Um, Burnley, on the other hand, yeah, tough game against Plymouth. Like, Plymouth showed against Luton. They're, they're no pushovers, you know. They're well drilled. They're, they're, they, they like a high press. They are a very functional team. And I'd say... It's not a bad result, you know, even, you know, going to Turf Moor and only losing 1-0. But for this, I've gone Burnley 2, Preston 0. And let's have a look at a team that 
participated in a great draw against Leeds last week. It was, let's have a look at Norwich versus Hull. Yeah, you were mentioning that you you don't think Preston have turned the corner. I think Norwich have. Um, I, I think mm. that 1-1 one, one is incredibly impressive, actually. I know I, I picked them to win it, but... You're not gonna, you're not gonna complain about a one-one draw. They were ahead, so maybe that. But um, yeah, they, they've looked a lot more convincing for me, um, and their attack is starting to click as well. They're playing some really good football. So um, Hull aren't doing too badly, but still inconsistent. Um, and at home, I've gone for a Norwich two-one win. I see Hull scoring, but I think Norwich are going to win it two-one. There's lots of two ones. I, I promise, I, not all of my score predictions are two-one. Just so you know. The f- <laughs> yeah, there's nothing wrong with a two-one. It, it shows that it's a really good game. I've got Norwich two, Hull nil, and yeah, I don't think Hull season has turned around. Yes, they've you know won three on the spin. But two of them were relatively easy games. And, you know, I'm not completely convinced by Tim Water right now. Like, yes, their squad looks really good. But, you know, going to Carrow Road, <laughs> tough, yeah. tough game. Like, this this will be a test of them. Like like I said with Sunderland, uh, Leeds coming to Stadium of Light will be a sign of whether they are genuine promotion contenders. For Hull, like, if they have indeed turned a corner... This is they got to go to to Norwich and get something and show that they are you know they are worthy of the squad that they have because that squad is ridiculous and uh, Tim Walter has to show that you know they mean business really so yeah Norwich two Hull nil yeah I, I agree I think he's going to be under pressure soon if we see what happened to Rossini last season it's. Mm. Oh. He's going to be under pressure soon. I really do think he will. Their owner is cutthroat if he doesn't start getting more consistent results. I don't think he should be, by the way, but I just think the way the club works, I think he could be. That's not going to help. Yeah, and on to the battle of the promoted sides. Two very different stories so far this season. <laughs> we have Hawksworth <laughs> versus Oxford. Pompey, what the hell happened? Right, um... I I was too miserable about our own second half on Wednesday to notice that Pompey had shipped six goals. That was the game we both predicted them to win. Um, They've looked Oxford. so tight. They yeah. looked so tight. What, and, and to what, capitulate, did you have like four players sent off? Did I miss that? <laughs> anyway, um, uh, they have done. I've. I, I I'm just going to go on on that. And Oxford looked. Uh, you know, as as poor as Luton were at, at points in that game, Oxford were excellent, and that shouldn't be overlooked. Oxford were excellent; they were excellent going forward again, um, and without Brannigan as well. Fair play to them. I've gone for a two nil Oxford United win. Yeah, Oxford look proper mustard, don't they? They look, they look so good. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, I, I was saying in in our last prediction video, like, Portsmouth look good as well, and then. You know, losing six one just comes out of nowhere, especially after the start of the season they've had. Like this was meant to be their first easy game. And yeah, maybe that's <laughs> got, the problem. Yeah, they, and yeah, they must have taken their eye off the ball, foot off the gas, mm. and just capitulated. Um, but I'm I'm backing Oxford because I was so impressed with them. I've gone two one for Oxford. Um, I think it'll be a scrappy game. Because, you know, it's two sides that, you know, really want to get one over on each other. You know, thinking about it, you know, Portsmouth, they, they could be sort of in a stronger position because it's at home and because they, they've already locked horns with Oxford last season. But I do think Oxford are a championship side now. They know how to play. Their recruitment was just insane yeah. as well that they they've really seamlessly translated into the championship and welcome aboard um but yeah i think oxford will win this one 2-1 they will they will they have to um and onto a team that i think have turned a corner coventry <laughs> versus sheffield wednesday uh you've seen my score prediction um look 
Coventry probably have turned the corner. I'm going to level with everybody. I'm just jealous. As a Luton fan, Coventry <laughs> seem to have turned that corner that we haven't. Um, but, you know, we got two wins without being convincing. But let's say, you know, Coventry won 3-0. They, they did brilliantly. They looked good on the night. Sheffield Wednesday got a 0-0 draw. Um, so you'll be surprised that I've gone for a 2-1 Sheffield Wednesday win. Um <laughs> A roll masterclass. Danny roll masterclass. There's there my prediction. Yeah. There it is. Okay. But it is whoa, whoa, mainly whoa. based on jealousy. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah uh, fair I'll be honest. We gotta we gotta have a buzzer that we hit whenever we see Danny Roll Masterclass. <laughs> yeah. Ba, ba, ba. Fanfare. Yeah. yeah. Um I've gone the complete opposite way. I think Cov are gonna have another three nil win. Look, Ben Sheaf's back in the team now. Yeah, exactly. And like, was that result a case of having Ben Sheaf back in the side? Is he that important to them? And you know what? Yes. I, I think that they're, they're slow starters. They are every season. And, and then they're always up there in the playoffs come the end of the season. Th- this is it. This is The corner has been turned. And I reckon at home, it's going to be... It's going to be Cov. I can't look past Coventry. I just can't. So I've gone Cov 3, Sheffield Wednesday, nil. Yeah. That's has probably to more likely. Probably more likely. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Mark Robbins masterclass. Yeah. And on to Derby County versus QPR. Yeah, both teams inconsistent. Both teams have dropped off in a little bit of form. I've gone for nil-nil on this one. I, I really struggle with predicting who who's going to. You know, both teams have shown they can score in the old games. Have been and been completely poor up front in others as well. You know, QPR. We we talked quite a, a lot about some of their attacking threats, like Frey, and, and we know what he can do definitely. But, how are they? How are they? Twenty second. I don't understand it. Yeah, it's it was the inconsistency, isn't it? They, 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 it's bits of games. I mean, we saw that when we played them. To be fair, you know, for a lot of the game when Luton played QPR, QPR weren't really participating, and then all of a sudden, you know, those players turned it on, and, and players that that you know did brilliantly for them, um, like Fredo Belli, etc. So yeah. I, it could be very different on this one, but I think nil-nil, I can't pick a winner. So I think Derby are going to cut the bad run of form, like three losses on the spin. Derby at home, Pride Park, it, it, it has to it has to click. And uh, I've gone for a tight 1-0 win, mainly because of QPR's um, sort of, yeah, as you say, inconsistency. You know that they, they haven't. They, it's been five games since they've won, um, which I think was against us, wasn't it? I think that was their last win. Probably. That yeah, probably. Right. Oh, uh, you know, I don't understand it. You know, they're, they're conceding goals. They're scoring goals, averaging more than one goal a game. But you know, Derby. They've they've already got three wins on the boards. I just think they, they're going to be all right. Uh, you know, I've changed my mind about Derby, you know, since we had to apologize to them. You know, they've, they've wheeled out some decent results yeah. apart from the last three games. So, yeah, I think it's going to be a tight one, but I think Derby are going to squeeze it at home. And on to Plymouth versus Blackburn Rovers. Also hard to predict, isn't it? Um, mm. Two teams that started differently. Both of us predicted both of these teams. Well, I certainly predicted Bradburn to be much further down than you did. I'll say that now before you tell me otherwise. Yeah, um, but your but we both predicted. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I, I did. Ooh. I did actually. I think I'm pretty sure I, I, I apologised about that and Eustace as well. I mentioned his his importance to the team, but but both teams were were down there in our estimations, and they've had very different starts. But they are sort of crossing back over a bit now Plymouth have really been quite impressive over the last um, few games and you know yes they did lose against Burnley in midweek but that's no no shame in that whatsoever um, they put some excellent performances in in the two games prior to that as well Blackburn on the other hand had a, has had a, a bit of a rocky um, couple of games at least and certainly the last one 
I, I think it'll be high scoring though. Both teams can score a lot of goals. So I've gone Plymouth winning 3 2. I think it's going to be an absolute Ooh. humdinger of a game. Plymouth win it 3 2. Wowzer. Yeah. Wowzer. I've gone far fewer goals there. So I was really impressed with Plymouth. I was. Um, seeing them at home park against Luton, they look really dangerous in attack. Yeah. Thinking about their defence, though, maybe I think a 1 0 Plymouth home win might be a bit optimistic but hey they're just predictions <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> i feel like i'm mug now um but you know i'll be vindicated if they do win one nil here <laughs> yeah well none of us predicted stoke to win six one did they so you know <laughs> hey strange stranger things have happened um yeah yeah look blackburn lost their last game and uh they're not the most convincing wins and you know, I have said in a video about Chaos Clubs doing really well. I do think Blackburn will revert to the mean. I think yeah. they'll be mid-table this season. There will be a drop-off. This could be the first step in one of those drop-offs. And I I'm, I'm impressed with Plymouth. You know, my apologies to Plymouth fans as well, because I'm on board the Rooney train. I'm, you know, I'm captain of the Rooney Express here. Wow. I think we both had them in our bottom three at the beginning of the season. But I, yeah. I think they just have a lot of talent in that team and they play some decent football. Yes, they need to improve a little bit at the back. They're lucky they weren't punished against Luton, but here we go. Choo choo, mm. Rooney Express. Greatest manager that ever was. Um, right. He's going to prove no, us no, all wrong. No, you're just being ridiculous now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. On to the next one. Bramall Lane, mm. Sheffield United versus Luton Town. Yeah, um, we just recorded our preview for this. Um, I, I think if you just look at the game, Sheffield United haven't scored as many goals as they could do, but they've been very good at the back. Another 1-0 win. Yeah. Um, I think they, they goal, didn't but score in that game. No, though. they didn't. No, you're right. But they've been very tight at the back. Luton, on the other hand, um, haven't really created, um, or they have created chances, but they haven't put them away as being a problem for, for them. And they've been very leaky at the back as well. Every team seems to be able to cut through Luton and score. So I've gone for a Sheffield United 2 0 win. I hope I'm wrong. <laughs> See, I wouldn't say Luton have been leaky at the back. I'd say more disorganised. Uh, it's been an interesting one because the defenders don't really look like they know what to do in the system. Yeah, it leaves yeah. a lot of spaces to be exploited, a lot of space in behind the back three and also a lot of space in front of the back three, um, mainly because the system isn't working. Hopefully we'll see maybe a little change um, but I'm actually quite optimistic for this because I, I feel after that Oxford game, Rob Edwards knows having been bossed by a team that's just been promoted, like as good as Oxford are and yeah. as good as their signings have been, like being bossed pretty much. And we are lucky that Luton weren't out, you know, Oxford weren't out of sight in the first half. Like Kaminsky had a great game. Mengi with some vital blocks on the line. Uh, essentially, I feel Luton will be up for it. Because if they're not up for this one, what else can they get up for? They just can't. That you know they have to get up for it. So I've gone for a sweaty away win. I've gone Luton one, Sheffield United nil. That would be fantastic. Um, I really hope you're right, as I said. But if you look <laughs> at the last few games, then I've I find it hard to to predict it. But yeah, like I said, I really hope you're right. Who can predict the championship? Maybe Luton oh, will quite. win six one. Oh, now, now, now. <laughs> Which brings us yeah. on to our next game: <laughs> Swansea City versus Stoke. I'd like to extend my apologies to all Stoke fans every week with another apology. I am sorry, Nicholas Pella, for calling you a goalkeeping coach. Um, I think it was a joke that just sort of. You know, I, I heard from somewhere. I genuinely thought you were a goalkeeping coach. Yes, you were a highly esteemed first team coach. And obviously, you do know what you're doing. Contrary to what I was saying, that you looked completely lost on the touchline in the previous two games prior to this 6-1 battering, which was a tremendous result. And 
a Tom Cannon masterclass. You can see why half the championship were after him and why Luton Town wanted to decide him on a permanent. So where are you sitting for this game? If I've said it once, I've said it a million times. Stoke City are an excellent team. Uh, they're well organised um, behind the scenes as well. How many times have I praised Stoke this season? Um, so, you know, based on that, I'm... <laughs> I'm sorry, I can't help myself. Um, yeah, it was amazing, wasn't it? And and as you said, Tom Cannon did did brilliantly. Um, and yeah, lots of teams wanted him too. Um, I also think Swansea are a good team as well. Stoke for me, and this is going to seem like I'm just now doubling down on a position, but they have come off 6-1, they did brilliantly. But let's not ignore their form prior to that, particularly away from home. I see Swansea winning this game. Tight tighter than I would have given it before but I still think Swansea are a better team than Stoke. 6-1's an amazing result. I certainly didn't see it coming. I would challenge any Stoke fan to have seen that coming but um, it's it's you know it shows that they've got potential to do to do well up front. I just at Swansea no I still think Swansea are going to take it 1-0. I've also gone tight. I've gone 2-1. And you're, you're right, considering that the previous games that Stoker played in, not one person, I bet not one person placed no. a bet or even a sportsman bet with a friend saying, yeah, you know what? We're going to batter a team. No one saw it coming. Absolutely no, no one. Um, considering how tight Portsmouth had been up to that point as well. Yeah, Swansea, they look good. They, they do look good. Um you know, they're not scoring too many. They're not conceding too many. The games have always been tight affairs. And, you know, they, they do have um, they do have that talent. And, of course, they have Luton's toilet cleaner. Like, they're heading up recruitment, as, as I'll say. Uh, I'll always remember that. Absolutely fantastic. I can't even remember the fella's name. What is it? Paul Watson. Can't remember. Paul Watson. Yeah, yeah, there we go. Luton's keg flusher. Is Paul Watson? Um, yeah, look, they they've been all right. I think they'll be fine for mid table this season. But yeah. they they will they'll be hard to beat, and they will pull out some results. But I think this one, maybe there there could be some overconfidence from Stoke after such a good result, and you know away from home now it's going to be a toughie. It will be a toughie. But I'm backing Swansea here. Really am. Right, yeah. on to Watford versus Middlesbrough. Well, I don't think anyone's going to be surprised that I've gone for a Borough win. I've been talking up Borough quite a lot. Um, and, and I think they're a very good attacking team. Watford, on the other hand, um, I think I did predict them to win one game, um, which I think was quite generous. Um, but they got hammered by a, a pretty average Preston team, let's be fair. Um, I know that they're at home and Borough haven't been as, in, as maybe quite as impressive away, but I've gone for a Borough 2-0 win for this one. I think Watford are going to be on the slide um, towards down, down towards the bottom. That's what I think, but we'll see. You really think Borough are going to score more than one goal? Yeah, Is I that... do. <laughs> hmm. I think that, but their their overlying data suggests that they should be scoring more than they are. They um, should. And also, they you've should. got to bear in mind as well that the one goal they scored was against a very well drilled West Brom team as well. They're not easy to score against. So, uh, Watford, on the other hand, as Preston showed, are easy to score against. So, I, I'm going on Watford's defence as well as Borough's attack on this one for two nil. That that's my reasoning. Okay, it depends if you know Watford are disorganised like they were against mm -hmm. Preston. We'll have to see. I've gone Borough one, Watford nil, and I think it will be a case of they'll cut through Watford, but I think that they're still going to be missing chances. We'll, we'll have to see when they, you know, when they actually click. You'll know when they click because they will hammer a team four or five nil just out of nowhere, and it'll mm -hmm. be like a switch flicking. You know, like Latte Laugh will start scoring and bam it, it, it'll just come out of nowhere we'll, we'll have to yeah. see but yeah I, I am backing Borough to win this because you know back to back wins I think they can make that three on the spin yeah yeah 
Uh, and on to Carlos Corbrand's West Brom versus <laughs> Millwall. It hasn't been good for Carlos Corbrand recently, no. has it? Back to back losses. Yeah. Yeah. A couple of poor results. Um, I'm still gone for them for the win on this one at home to Millwall. I think they're a stronger side. I've gone for a 1 0. But you're right. It hasn't been an easy couple of games for them. But, you know, it's the championship and they were never, ever going to go the season without getting beaten. They have got a good squad. Um, is it the best in the league? Probably not. Um, probably got the best manager in the league. But I would suggest that at some point, you know, th those players are going to have the odd off day. And they've had a couple of poor results. I don't know whether that means that they, they're going to go on a poor run, though. Um, as I said, last game was against a decent Borough side and they lost it tight 1-0. Um, but goals are drying up and that's a bit of a problem, I guess. 1-0 um, for me based on that. And yeah, as I said, I think they're a stronger team than Millwall at home, particularly. I think Millwall are going to have a good game here. I think they're going to go in, get a draw, leave with the point and they're going to be absolutely delighted so i've got one one for this one um i think it's going to be a smash and grab though it's going to be the most one-sided mm. draw that you'll probably ever see <laughs> i think west brom are going to be piling yeah. on pressure i think millwall are going to defend really well in this one but again impossible to predict isn't it, it it's really it's is. an interesting one because with these back-to-back -back losses the only team that are still unbeaten in the championship sheffield united yeah. So doesn't that make Chris Wilder the best manager in the championship over Carlos no, Corbran? One... King uh, of the ring. I, I would... <laughs> I mean, look, yeah. He certainly has been the best manager in the championship in the past. Um, but I, I think that he has a lot more to do and to prove. Um, they both went to basket cases of clubs. Um, Carlos Corbran went to Huddersfield at a very difficult time. And we know where Wilder went before he, he was... Um, he went back to Sheffield United and, and look how well both of them did in those circumstances in comparison to one another would be my argument for that. But yeah, I mean, if he does this well throughout the season, yeah, you'd have to say he probably is. <laughs> we'll, we'll see. It's a long old season, isn't it? A long it? way off, yeah. Uh, yeah, a long way to go. I think 38 more games and someone better at maths can tell me how many points that is to play for. So what was a that? Lot. 30, yeah, a lot, a lot. There you go. You're good at maths. You're better at maths than me. It's a lot, of, a lot of points. Right, yeah. on to our final game. We have Bristol City versus Cardiff. Now, if I've said it once, Ollie, I've said it a million times. Cardiff City are a very well-run club. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is brilliant, isn't it? I mean, I absolutely, I'm pretty sure I put them as the lock of the week to lose. I can't even remember. <laughs> <laughs> but it is, yeah. I mean, of all the results, I didn't see that one coming. Maybe Where that, did and that the Stoke come gunners. from? Well, quite. Where? Well, no, madness, oh, right? Word. And Bristol City. Um, but Bristol City at home against Cardiff. I'm sorry, Cardiff. I know you just beat Millwall 1-0. 2-0 to Bristol City. I still can't see. I, I can't see that being the, the turnaround. But I might be wrong. Bristol City are too strong for Cardiff at home. I really think they are. I think Cardiff will go for it. They'll have a go, but I think Bristol City are going to absolutely pick them to bits. It's going to be Liam Manning ball, and it's gonna, yeah. they're going to get turned around. But I think they'll yeah. still score, you know, because Bristol City, they, they do like conceding. So I've gone Bristol City 3, Cardiff 2. I think it'll be an entertaining one. Yeah, I know. I think it's going to be <laughs> like playing NBA Love Jam it. on the old uh, on the old SNES back in the day. It's going to be bam, 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 bam. Now, that's my thought. That's my crazy game of the week for you. That, yeah, wow, that would be crazy. I mean, <laughs> Cardiff finding the back of the net twice in one game. Blimey, <laughs> that would be crazy. Uh, you never know. Look, they, they've had yeah. three this season already. You know, the goals mm. are just flowing. <laughs> Like yeah, win, okay, wins beget so. confidence. <laughs> wins beget confidence. Yeah. So I think they do. You know, uh, do. I think this could be, uh, it could be a little corner that's being turned. But you know that you know they'll turn the corner and they'll be facing a brick wall. But they're still going to be losing. Mm. Um, mm. You know, Bristol City three, Cardiff two. But it's time for who is your lock of the week? I think this is really tough. I I, I think this week because there's not there's no there's no obvious ones. 
I've gone for Oxford United to be Portsmouth, but Ox this would be their first away win. So even that, that's a, a bit of a stretch. But based on the two trajectories oh, it's coming, of the club, I, I think so. I think so. They showed at Luton how how close they were. So I've gone for Oxford to beat Portsmouth 2-0 or just to win as my lock of the week. Okay. Yeah, well, why not? You know, I, I think they're ready for that first away win of the season. They've been so unlucky, so many tight games and unlucky against Luton because they were well worth the the win, essentially. They, they should have got the win. Uh, it was tremendous goalkeeping, near misses, good defending at times and uh, unfortunate errors to the goal. I get that, yeah. Uh, my lock of the week. I'm going, I'm circling full circle here. I think it was my first ever lock of the week as well. I'm going Kov. Going Kov 3, Sheffield Wednesday nil. Because I think it's going to be Mark Robbins, baby. He knows what he's doing. Um, one of the best managers in the division. Ben Sheaf's back in the team. I think he, he was the reason why they, they just have struggled. Um, you know, he'll put the foot on it. He, he'll be there creative from midfield. He'll be dictating play. So that's what I can't see past Kov, really. Just can't see it. Yeah, um, yeah, and I, I think we're going to see them rock it up the table now. Is that the sound a rocket makes? <laughs> no, probably I not. Hope not. No. That's not a rocket you're thinking of, mate. <laughs> <laughs> right. Well, that's us done for this week. If you want to get your championship predictions in, we're going to put all the games in the comment section. Just copy, paste. Slap them down in the comment section. Let us know and get involved. Also, if you're watching this and you're not subscribed to our channel, why are you not subscribed? Just hit that subscribe button. Hit that bell button. You'll get all the notifications when we go uh, live and with our championship predictions. We have a good time. I think you'll have a good time watching it. But as always, whoever you support, I hope you all have a great week and the best of luck to your teams, except Sheffield United. <laughs> 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 <laughs>